trees below are letting stones for stones to be measured. Second practice may begin.
We've got snow, wind, and rain outside. We're nice and warm inside the Eau Claire Curling Club here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Here at the 2024 USA Curling U21 Men's and Women's National Championships. Eight men's teams and eight women's teams vying for the right to represent the United States next season at the Junior Men's Worlds and Women's Junior B Worlds. Women's draw number four coming up. There you see the standings. Giroux and Johnson pacing the field at 3-0 with Pekowitz Chapman at 2-1. Berg and View at 1-2. And, and Berg and Shield now at 0-3 at the bottom of the field. A look at the matchups for this round of games. Miranda Shield and Nia Berg on sheet A. Sheet B, Julia Pekowitz taking on Gracia Berg. On sheet C, Ava Chapman will take on Allery Johnson and our feature matchup on sheet D, Ali Giroux taking on Claire Bue. Here are the teams. Team Giroux with that 3-0 record. Looking to stay undefeated. Team View at 1-2, trying to get to 500 for their tournament. There you see Team Giroux. Alternate Savannah Cook will be playing in this game at lead. Ella Fleming at second. Tessa Thurlow at lead at third. And Ali Giroux at skip. Tessa Thurlow third. <laughs> that one will trip up anybody, I'd like to think. And for Coach View, Ella Wendling at lead. Megan McPhee at second. Emily Rubenzer at third. Claire View at skip. And they are coached by James Wendling. Team Giroux, two coaches, Anya Normando and Craig Fleming. Tyler George joining you live here with Olympian and Junior National Champion, Mike Poplinski. Mike, thanks for joining. Second time in the booth. We're happy to have you back. Yeah, Tyler, great to be here and watch another great uh, junior women's game. The uh, ice and conditions continue to be outstanding here at the Eau Claire Curling Club. Yep. Opening stone in play for Team View to the back of the forefoot. Giroux playing the open hit. Nine, five. And there is Savannah Cook, first oh. time we've seen her on broadcasts. Yes. Yes. Playing the out turn hit yes. and stick. Hard. Savannah in the lineup replacing Brooke Giroux for this game. Mike, I think just a rotation thing for the squad, no reason for that uh, other than just Getting the alternate some action, keeping her ready for a little rest for yeah. for Brooke as well in the front end. So, a lot of a lot of sweeping in these 10 end games. Claire View throwing lead and skipping in this game. We can hear Tessa laughing because I think we almost lost her going by the camera there. Those cameras do get in the yeah. way every once in a while on the sheet. That's why we're able to broadcast for you. But I, I, I do, I, I can vouch for even when they're manned, when there's people with the cameras, they're always on one side of the sheet. So you have to go down the other one to stay out of view and not crash into anybody. Yeah. Savannah's the Happy. Wisconsin team member of this five person team. The two sweepers, both from North Dakota and the Jeru sisters from Minnesota. to get to split the house here in the first and play a zero or two. Ends up with a corner guard, not a bad result. Still good offensive position starting here for Team Drew. hit by Emily Rubenzer. All right, here we go. The commentators in the booth are making sure we have this lineup correct with Clairview calling the house and throwing lead. Nine! Nine! He's 
Ella Fleming throwing her first for Team Giroux. A little heavier than expected out of hand and great communication by both sweepers to let Allie know the rock was coming a little faster. You're okay. So here's the Southpaw Rubenzer with her second in the first end. Looking to keep the yellow on that side of the sheet and away from the corner guard. Another good shot. The stick made rolls right to the side of the button. We saw Team Giroux in action in an earlier draw, Mike, and just a good solid team, a lot of energy, a lot of communication, a lot of loud communication. Yeah, they, 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 do, uh, they do make sure that they're heard by everyone. And I think that's that's good. That's a good system for their team. Tessa down on the straight side. Very close on the roll. Oh, that's well done. Buried Great behind shot. the corner. Great shot by by Ella. You like that? Sure. We don't have half. From one Ella to another here with Ella Wendlin coming up. Control. So Ella Wendling throwing third stones for Team View. That over curls and catches the guard, but enough to push it through. Drew looking to go right back underneath the guard. Play for the big end. Nice late call there by Claire to, to get the rock off uh, instead of nosing and keeping the, the rock in the house covered. It exposed a little more. So Tessa Thurlow, maybe familiar with her if you watch the women's nationals. Team Miranda Shield. Very experienced player. Right now. Curl. Curl. Tessa brings a lot of experience playing Curl. a number of different positions in her, her last three to five years of curling. So knows what's expected from each spot in the lineup and a great touch here to start with her first shot. Barry's a good piece. The sweepers didn't want to bring it behind the tee line, so let it stop full forefoot. Wendling with her second throw, trying to follow that stone. Early freeze, Mike, a little tester. Yeah, the third. This freeze might work just like a double takeout if she puts it at a great spot. Easy. Sweepers feel it's heavier than expected. Not quite curling to the line they were going for, so okay. going to sit open in the back of the forefoot. So you may see Giroux try to roll away, wisely Ten called. Five. Great call. I don't think I need to roll that far. Okay, just here is good. What are you laughing at? Yeah, really, anything that rolls away is good here. And you want to roll far enough, there isn't a wall of stones to go in front of. But... As they talked about, doesn't need to go all the way out to the 12-foot. You can still stay in a, the 8-foot scoring space just in case something ends up behind that guard. Yeah, that's yeah, keep this uh, in a good position, and Tessa feels like she has it. And that's really well done. Just where you called it, Tyler. A great spot. Good place. Really great. Decisions for Claire and Megan here if they're going to play the freeze again and possibly give it up a larger end. Might have a hit and roll off the rock on the left if they want to just limit the damage. That's yeah, an interesting decision to have to make in the first end, already looking at three okay. without hammer on skip stones. It's one of those that it, it isn't a 
where's the tolerance? This is you have to make it. <laughs> Put it in a really good spot, yeah. So out turn freeze attempt for Megan McPhee. Throwing last stones for Team View. Megan letting her sweepers know that she did add a little at the end to make sure that she got the right split. Got a push. Starting to turn over now. The weight's there, it looks really great. A yeah, much better line than the previous freeze just needs to get there. And there's where only rolling to the eight foot on that previous hit comes into play. Still sitting three. So well talked out by Team Giroux. Yeah, great catch by Tessa there. I think Allie just showed it to, to roll away, and Tessa knew she just could stay where she did. It uh, put more pressure on Megan's shot. No, that's really bad. Yeah, that yellow stone is still dangerous for Team Giroux. So if you throw anywhere out to the wing, they're almost assuredly tapping that stone. Yeah, and Allie really can't play a guard because then I think Megan just wraps underneath and, and can take the whole end away as well. So uh, precision shot coming here by Allie. And they are playing the draw, trying to get a piece behind that stone that's half in the eight foot. Precise placement, and this is one, the line is the most important thing. If you get any piece behind that stone, it really cuts that tap off. Yeah, staying above the T-line and underneath that stone is perfect. So Ali Giroux, her squad undefeated through three games. Trying to set them up for a big end in the first. Line is good if they can get the weight there. Oh, it looks really good. Just corners on the rock. Does take a little bit of the angle away on the tap. So that red's a little higher. Talking about the two options. Either coming underneath or playing the yellow tap. Yeah, I like that shot a lot. That's... That plays into a really good spot if you can make that freeze on the intern side. I mean, you could just tap them up. Curl, so, what? If we're going to miss, it's going to be over curl, so I don't think I'm worried about that. Okay. Mike, there's a lot of good spots yeah, you could leave it playing the intern tap, or sorry, the intern, intern draw. Draw, correct. It doesn't have to be made perfect <laughs> on a freeze to outcount a few of those reds. I, I think at this time, if they, they knew they could uh, force Allie into a draw for two, they'd feel really good about it. Looks like they are sticking with the tap. This is a very precise shot. And you have to get to at least nose to not touch the red that's cornered on it. It's a tough one for the sweepers. They have to make sure the weight's right, but wait for the rock to get to its break point as well to, to curl it to the nose of the yellow. So an early tester for Megan McPhee, trying to get her team out of trouble in the first end. Out turn tap attempt. Needs the curl away still right now. Line, line's getting better. Really hard. Hard end. Really Needs to hard. tap it about a foot. Okay. It touches that stone far enough to out count one red. I know they're not really looking at it, Mike, but you hit anywhere on the outside of that red stone. That's very likely four, yeah, especially rock. if you thin it. Yeah, the yellow just pops straight out, but I think uh, the goal of the end was probably the deuce and a, a draw to the draw to the four foot for threes. Uh, something that that I think Allie will take at this point. Yeah, I'm gonna give it like one or two feet more. This so will be a draw for three. Final stone, first end. Allie Giroux, out turn draw. It's a little better than full eight foot. A little newer, little newer path out that far. Yeah, this is a very quick track. We've seen this all week. No. Trying to hit the brakes. 
getting in the slide path, and very well done. Great shot. Three times in the first for Team Giroux. They take a 3-0 lead after one end of play. City's Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. Three points in the first for Ali Giroux and her squad. The draw to the forefoot on her last. Very well put together end for Team Giroux. So Team View will have Hammer for the first time now. Let's see if they can get a couple. Gotta Bounce back. Here. Top four! Top four! Hard! Hard! Savannah Hard. Cook Top four. playing the out turn draw. Wisconsin State High School champion, Savannah Cook. Good spot, Sam. Yeah, we've been looking at the resumes of these players at the age they're at, some of the, the lists of titles that they've already won. It's pretty prodigious, not just in curling. We've had some football state champions. Definitely, yeah. Team Fitzgerald, I believe, from yeah, the guy's side. Uh, very competitive soccer players, uh, Three. Three. golfers, Here. pilots in Good training. Push if you can. Gotta be Multifaceted here. athletes in the sport. Yep. You brought up you brought up golfers and two of the golfers on uh, two of the, yep. the members of the junior development program with me, Brock Sando and Caden Abair, both have hole in ones in the last two months. So oh. in addition to golfers, they also have uh, they're, they're a yeah. little lucky, right? A hole in one's got to be lucky, doesn't it, Tyler? Uh, you, okay. uh, there has to be a little bit of luck. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> shout out to Brock and Caden for those yeah, shots. No but. kidding. <laughs> Now they need the eight ender to complete the the combo platter. I do believe Caden and and company have one of those too. So. Well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> gonna have to bowl a 300 game. Street top, top eight. Top four. Top eight. Top eight. Out turn draw again for Cook. Top 12. Street time. Just eight. looking for a top yeah. ring. Somewhere around top eight. Just top eight. Good, Sam. A good pair. That's fine. Getting that three early. Allie just playing to the house and making uh, Team View force the action to try to get their one. deuce back. It's only getting one. Okay. Yeah, we watched in our previous draw in the men's, uh, Team Fitzgerald got out to a 2-0 lead after one and then got a couple more steals to get the 4-0, and they didn't push the pace, their their opponent was trading hits, Lenoy, uh, pretty consistently, playing the, to try to get a half miss and then attack, but Fitzgerald wasn't impatient, they just played the simple shots, had simple execution, didn't. Uh, the, the, the field here, is, I know we said it in the last time we talked, is, is really good and, and really young, and, and some experience uh, gaining by these skips. And, uh, it's, it's fun to see on both the, the girls and uh, junior women and junior men's side. Yeah, we're seeing the same from Ali Giroux early in this game too. Just keeping things simple, hitting the stones in the house. Don't need to press. Just take the points where you get them, keep the lead. And that's what getting that early three affords you in these games. Ella Fleming playing the out turn hit. Looks like that's gonna peel off the guard. That one will go I, back as that's rock. the fifth shot of the end. One more shot good. later and that would have been a good been result. A really good result, <laughs> sure. Just kind of got it going. Counting is really hard. 
I know. That's the miss we've seen more often than not this week, Pep, is especially going towards the wall, the inside out shots that curl so hard. With the amount of broom that you have, it's, you know, with the eye line on it, it looks like, oh, it's got so far to curl, so I'm just going to hook it over a little bit and help it out. Well, once it starts curling, it's yeah, going to continue gone. curling. Yeah, the ice has great finish to it, and with the right hit weight, you can really manage some rocks, but uh, you, you do have to throw it clean out of hand. A nice hit and roll away to separate, separate those stones. That's going to bite in the outside 12. Good shot from Emily Rubenzer there. Even when Allie hits this one, the, the setup for, for the deuce looks really good. Maybe even the three if Claire gets underneath that corner guard in a good spot. Another try at this one for Ella Fleming. Looks like she should get the roll across. A little solid weight. A good result in just getting yourself in position to make a double at some point. But sometimes we see all curlers, juniors especially, that try maybe for that double there and roll out, and it just takes the pressure off the other team as they can just draw underneath and underneath the corner guard. So Either here, way, team view the having double. to make the hit Kay. instead of just being able to draw. So good shot by Ella to stay there. Emily Rubenzer's second of this second end. I'd like to roll a little bit towards the middle if possible, but can't cross too much so that you jam. Well, that's well thrown there, good shot. Uh, I know team, team view quite well for the last three to five years. We've played against them with Wisconsin and seen them at different tournaments. And um, Emily's new to this team, newer to this team, so I don't uh, enjoy watching her throw a rock. It comes out of her hand clean, and she just seems to have really great weight control. So um, good good young player coming through. Tessa Thurlow playing the intern hit. Looks like with that weight, they might be taking a run at the double. Nothing wrong with a hit and stick still. Does just stick, but sitting shot rock. Mine too. Good angles for team view. Yeah, she'd be able to maybe roll to the center and take that, make that double much harder here if Ella makes a, a clean throw. Oh, yeah. really like yeah. Early sweep on this one. Is crossing a little bit. Will it avoid the jam? It does just squeak by, and that wow. rolls all the way over. That's all the a way great into the result. corner. Yeah, absolutely. Very precise shot there from Ella Wendling. Top, top four. The choice of freezing them out or maybe ripping yep. the corner and like limiting it. the damages here. It looks like uh, we'll choose the, the freeze. Yeah, aggressiveness here from Team Giroux, too, with this 3-0 lead. It's a pretty big area under the corner. You can throw it where you get a good result, but need to make it. Now staring down a three of their own. Should be by the guard. Now just a matter of wait. Uh, they're deep and bouncing off. Yeah, just a little bruise on the sweep there. Had to go a little for line, but they were sweeping the curl early. Good call by Claire to... Oh, actually, I was just going to say roll into the center. <laughs> sure looks really good so that they don't have a pocket to freeze to. So I think the original call was rolling to the center, and she did say nose isn't the worst. I tend to disagree. It could leave a pocket to allow Team Drew out of the end. Out turn hit yeah. attempt. Yep. Yeah. Hard up. Ella Wendling. Hard up. You got it. Whoa. Whoa. It should take off Whoa. right about here. Push, 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 push. 
Good shot rolling away. We'll Great see if shot. that leaves a double on the opposite side. May have rolled just the right spot. That's pretty good. Yeah, make this. Yeah. If you hit it pretty thick, sit on top. Firm. Yep, you got it. So they believe there's enough of a stagger they can make the double or the roll. Firm double. So probably playing to give two at this point if you're Giroux. So you really want to get this stone at least in the vicinity of that other yellow. So if you don't make the double or the perfect roll on this shot, you still have a simpler double on your last. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yes, yes! Staying somewhere closer to it is the goal. Really sweeping this one to hold it. Just Caught catches the, the back of, of the stone. Real close by Allie and great read by Tessa. She had the, the straight side sweep on the whole time and just got the bottom of the rock. I've already sang like five songs today. Got a repertoire. Uh, just tea. I was just talking about how many songs I've already sang today. Calling for T, if you carry this back to even up with that stone that's in the back of the house, there really isn't a double anywhere. T will probably leave a double back again. Meg McPhee has thrown also a lot of positions in her playing career. I know she's been the vice for a long time with this team, uh, throwing last rocks here the last year or so, uh, gaining confidence as she goes. We'll see where they place this stone. Okay. That's good. Good to nice weight by McPhee. Again, could have probably taken that a little farther back once they yeah. knew they were in the house. Yeah, one more, one more foot, right? Okay. You got it. Firm or do we want to go 9-5? Oh, you need us an inch more. So it's probably a little more than half close to that for the double. Nine, five, Sounds like they're playing for the roll as you hear 9-5, the sweep or the weight call. I think Allie could maybe throw a little more weight to get a little more action on the rock, but if they're just playing the roll, 9-5 is their, seems to be their normal from the other game we called with Team Drew. And Allie wasting no time getting in the hack and firing away. Sweeping this one for line as well. A little too thin it looks like. And that goes right by, so that'll be a free draw for three here in the second for view. Sometimes we talk about playing the same path on your draw, and um, I don't mind Megan going to the other draw here. They've played this LSD uh, in the pregame practice, so they know the line, they know the weight that's going to the center. Even early in the, the, the game, I think the ice will be very conducive to having the same weight as she just threw. So draw to the house for Megan McPhee for third point, final stone of the second end. The brushers seem to like it. Looks good. Yeah, the sweepers valet this one in. No problem at all. And the teams trade threes to start this game. Tied up 3-3 after two ends. And in the second end break, Steve's Curling Supplies. America's number one curling equipment supplier for over 50 years. It's proud to support USA Curling. No matter your skill level or budget, they have all of the top products from the most popular brands in the sport. Right now, you can save $10 on any purchase of $100 or more when you use the code USACURLING10 at checkout. Visit us at stevescurling.com for all your curling needs.
Couple of field goals to start us off. In our feature game over on sheet D. Giroux with a three in the first. View three in the second. We're 3-3 in the third. Tyler George with Mike Paplinski here in the booth. And Mike, you like to see that rally from Team View after giving up that three in the first. Looking a little flat. Could have been more than three, too, with a half make. In the last couple shots from Giroux leading up to their, their hammer. And then they come right back and get a three of their own. So good right. showing from the young squad. Yeah, Team View just uh, really pounced on a half shot. They got the corner guard hit before during the free guard zone. And once they had that extra rock in play, uh, they really positioned rocks well that end. So that first guard just glides into the top of the 12 foot Easy. for Skip Clairview. Two's okay. Two's fine. Gonna take another go at the guard, get something up top. Claire and Megan are both students at the University of Whoa. Minnesota and uh, have gone through that, that year of what do we do if, after we're high school students and, and going into college. So great to see them still playing at a really high level um, and taking on college at the same time. Yeah, we've all had to make those decisions, Mike. And you know, how how competitive do I want to try to be while I'm making that transition from the high school years into college years, and then once again after your college years, the same thing, getting into the the working world, trying to figure out what you're doing with your life. Yeah. How much time am I going to devote to the sport? And the good thing with curling is, you know, for some of us, we we played straight through and we varied the amount of time we played, but the sport will always be there. That's so correct. Even if yeah. you want to just play recreationally for a bit and take some time away from competitive curling. There's nothing that says you can't come back and play again at a high level. There's certainly a gap in my curling life and, and I came back to it in the, the world of coaching, which I've really learned to, to love, but um, you're right. I mean, we still see people our age or older um, still doing really great things. And uh, the, the, game, the game keeps getting better with these young players that continue to populate the field with more and more talented curlers. Emily yes. Rubenzer. Yep. Ten. Yes. Yep. Really hard. Trying hard. to play the short you run. Go. You got it. Go. You got it. Hi, yep. Ella. Hi, Ella. Really hard. Good call, Coach. Let's clip that red stone. And that's a shot we've seen uh, specifically uh, Brad Gushu's team play a lot, where they try to get that tight guard on the first. And if the opponent makes a come around that doesn't go any deeper than top four, they immediately play the short run. So it's by design trying to take away uh, your opponent's ability to get position under your center guard. And instead of playing the short freeze where they still have yep. that counter, you try to make the short run. But that has to be a tight guard in order to have that work. And, and it's very important to get that on the nose because you're, you're, you're playing it there for a reason. And uh, once you make that, you just out position them right from the get go. Really good shot to play and definitely has to be made with, with, with good talent. It settles into the back of the 12 foot. Like That's not a terrible spot when you have hammer. There's only one guard in play. You can still keep things relatively open. And it kind of can be a trap rock back there. <laughs> it's it's not an offensive stone until it is an offensive right. stone. Is yeah. that how we say that? Yeah. Well, that's a shot we used to throw intentionally. We learned from Al Hackner. Sure. Where the former world champion, for those that don't know, two-time champ. That's, you would come around the center guard, pretending to throw to the top four, pointing to it, but telling the shooters and the sweeper, we're actually throwing this to back eight. And if you map the end out from there about where your opponent can go, what their options are, and then what you follow it with, it's kind of a sneaky way to set up a three right from the lead stones. Yep. Pretty loose vibe out there by the teams. I think we're <laughs> not sure what song is going to be saying next by, by Team View, but I, I did hear Megan talk about what song should we sing next. Yeah, good Stop to mix it. the intensity with some singing. Some Just talked about that with the team. It, you can't have tight focus and intense focus for almost three hours, and some of these close <laughs> games are, are going three hours. So uh, try to find an ability to have a loose focus and uh, 
Looks, sounds like it's in, done with song with, with the team view. Good shot right to the top of the four footer, close to it, good position. And that's trial and error too, Mike, through your junior years and your competitive years. What gets the most out of you as an individual and for your team? What type of energy do we need to be at our best? And I'm not sure that would work for my team. To the singing, be singing part, probably not. I mean, Somerville's team, maybe? Yeah, maybe. That would work instead yeah. from those know. days? Yeah. Would have had some heavy metal going or something, I think. I could see Schnee having a little bit of a Brian Johnson from ACDC. There you rasp go. There you go. With his voice. You strike me more as a George Michael or something like wow. that. Wow. I don't know if I can bring George <laughs> Michael. <laughs> or Steve Perry, maybe. Yeah, it's closer, yeah. <laughs> Ella Wendling with that delivery. Ella's a bronze medalist in the Youth Olympic Games with Benji Peril. A great run by that team to win the U.S. trials and go over and represent well in, in Korea. And that settles into the back of the forefoot for Shot Rock. It's like Allie's going to the peel. It seems like they they still have a chance to play some offense here. Those two yellow rocks in the in the back. Yeah, playing the peel and trying to get it over the top of the red and maybe shoot the red back into those two yellows, I believe. So maybe you need to hit about half a stone. Tessa Thurlow playing peel weight. This one going backwards a little bit. But does make the peel. Straight peel. That side. Back. Yeah. Just that three. Yeah. This is a, a bit of a dangerous guard now, Mike. Just, just thinking the same if thing. They, if they do just straight guard the red, there may be a double available on the two yellows in the back of the four. Just hit three underneath cover. So if you're guarding, you kind of want to guard half and half. Almost exactly where the rock yeah, had read previously. Was, yeah. This has got a long ways to curl right now. Yeah, those yellow stones will be open in the back now. Did cover a bit of the red, so it, it is that double you talked about in the back. Well, they're still looking at playing the peel. I don't know what that guard is is guarding right now. Third, second rock at this point. Can I play on this yellow? Tessa sees it. Yeah. Yeah, you have room to make that double, but even if you just make the roll, it's a good shot. Doesn't seem like Allie's mic'd, so it's hard to hear what she's saying. Like, I don't think I want to. I think she was. I might have just lost her for a, okay, okay. a minute. So they are hitting the back stone. I think they're only playing it with control, maybe somewhere in there. Tessa just threw this line, so I think they know what to expect here. Should run pure here. Well, back and forth usually means a good shot. Yeah, nice roll. Really good. Got by by quite a ways. Definitely was room to take a go at that double. But getting shot, the most important thing. Really well done by Thurlow. It's like... Team View is choosing the intern here. Maybe seeing the out turn if they can put it in a good spot. It might take that that run back on the top rock and the top eight foot away. Yeah, it looks like they can get shot with either turn, but I agree, Mike. The out turn gives you a little better angle, probably. Will be the intern come around draw from Megan McPhee. No shortage of commentary from <laughs> Megan. I may put the headset down and just let her take over for it. a while. Oh, we love that in the booth. Yeah, that's, that is, that's a good yeah, thing. That is a good thing. You know, we would joke when we had 
Schuster's games or Richie Ruinen's games that there's no reason for us to be here. Just let them do the talking, yeah. right? <laughs> Just rubbing the guard. I had the chance to curl with Megan in the Halloween spiel a couple years back. Uh, I was playing with a team that needed a sub, and she's from the Madison area, so um, she sure enjoyed that because I was her junior development coach at the time, and it was really fun for me to get to know her and, and on the ice. It was really a, a cool experience. Right. I think if you can tap this here, that's really good. Like T, wait. Back four is okay. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get a bunch on this. Kip, I got Kip. That's a good one here, Allie. Hey, you might be surprised how many you can get if you make this tap well. They're talking about they don't think they're playing for a bunch. Your, your back 12-foot rock is still in existence and still alive is. back there. So you want to get to as much of this stone as you can on this tap. But even if it splits it open, it's really not that bad a result. There's not much they can do with those stones in the back of the four. Gally really wants to sit two after this shot. So looking for nose tap. Sweeper's trying to hold the line. Whoa, curl, curl. That looks really good on line right now. Whoa. The weight's good. Oh, that's really well that's done. Really good. Great tap. Where are you going to even heard her say it was picking in her hand and still got that result. So good adjustment. Yeah, ran good focus. Ran true right on that spot. <laughs> if you do that, it's okay. Yeah. I like that better than that. I like this. Just really good touch there from Giroux. Megan looking for an escape plan here. If she gets one on the corner of Shot Rock, looks like a force. See in the background, Brooke Giroux has switched spots with Savannah Cook today. It looks like she's statting the game for the team. All bundled up as well. I don't think it's too cold back here. Maybe a little colder by the glass as we're back in the dungeon in the corner. <laughs> That's right. Out turn draw for Megan McPhee. Very likely just trying to hold the opponent to two. The weight has to be perfect here. Looks like the line's pretty good. Really hard line. Really hard. That line's really, really good. Hard. The weight looks good too. What a shot. Really good. Good sweep. What a shot. Well, I actually got second shot. That's a great shot there. So Giroux likely has to throw pretty much the exact same thing she just did with maybe a foot or two more weight and try to move that stone. But yeah, still a shot for three. It's just got a lot tougher, right? Yeah, that's a great draw by Megan McPhee. She had a spot about three inches wide she could throw that to exactly. to get second shot. Rock was managed the whole, whole way down the sheet, too. It was really well done. Don't pay any attention to your broadcasters, folks, saying trying to hold them to two. Playing the same thing. We're one. Such good touch I'm there. The Tessa, I have a little less of it. So Giroux did just throw this shot. If she can get to nose, it will be for three. Very difficult shot. I do think the rock in the top eight did just wrap a little more under the guard, so it's a little tougher than her previous shot. And a rock Whoa. higher as well. Whoa. True. So less time to curl once it's by it. Close. Close, yeah. Very close yeah. once again. I think it's by. Oh, oh, it just paired that stone. And still made contact with think it second count. may have been good enough for two. If it doesn't touch that yellow guard, that would have been three. But just redirected it. You can move it. that six if you want one for sure. The tiniest bit. Yeah, it's like they made. And it is oh, still good on. enough for two. What a great <laughs> shot by. Ali Giroux, those great. skips trading blows. Great sweep there, too. I heard Tessa jump on that at the right time, and the sweepers really pounded the rock to the, to the right spot. So 5-3, Team Giroux leads after two. And in the third end break, we'll tell you about Warm Room Hero. They're more than just software. 
They're curlers dedicated to building long-term relationships with your club. Warm Room Hero provides continuous support to ensure your website exceeds your members' expectations. Check out Warm Room Hero today at curling.club. That's Warm Room Hero at curling.club. Early scores from around the sheets. You see on sheet A, Miranda Shield with a 2-0 lead over Nia Berg. On sheet B, Julia Pekowitz leading 2-1 over Gracia Berg. Sheet C, Ava Shatman, a 3-0 lead over Allery Johnson. That game's in the fourth end. And again, our feature game, Ali Giroux after two in the second, leading 5-3 over Claire View. Mike, some fantastic shot making there. Especially by the skips throughout the end, some, some well-made shots, but such precise shots that we had for the last three to go back and forth and, and end up with that two for Giroux. I think as the week goes on here, the, the curlers have a more of a feel for the break point, for the weight that's needed for the rocks, and, and where they're managing the, the amount of curl late on the rocks. You hear the, hear the skips and vices calling sweep a bit earlier and, and getting the rocks around and then letting them finish. And the nice thing for shot making on this ice too is that you get plenty of curl to make any shot you want to play, but it's a consistent curl that just starts curling more as it gets later in the shot. It's not a sharp curl late where you have to predict it before it happens. So it's, I, I don't want to say it's a more reactive curl where you have to predict the first because you still have to know what it's going to do, but it's not one where if you don't catch it before it starts curling, the rock is gone. You can still you can wait for the rock to have already curled in, right. in on its way down the sheet. Uh, we've also found it's the, the right weight for takeouts, how you're brooming it is really important this week. May have spotted another Olympic head in the background behind the sheet. <laughs> Jeff Isaacson over here from the Chaska Curling Club, taking leave of his duties for a bit to come and watch the young talent here. Caught Ike and, and Scott Belovich over today watching um, the girls here, Team uh, the Giroux girls do work in Chaska. And, um, team Genzel on the guy side, they're also guys that they know. So they said they're over for the day to watch some great curling. Do we need one more for an Olympic squad here in the building, Mike? I know John Benton was texting in trying to get on this team. He's not in the uh, building. Ixen, he's not here, though. He's not so here. We may have to go fishing for a fourth. Maybe we just take Ella Wembley. We had a junior Olympian. There we go. There it is. Somebody who's actually playing a lot these days. So <laughs> she can throw last. She can throw last. <laughs> Back four. Back four. Ella Fleming playing the outturn come around draw. Nice finish there by Thurlow to get that buried, top of the button. You like that? Yeah. You know, Tessa's training regiment in the last couple years has really transformed her, her sweeping ability. She's really good with the rock and, and knowledgeable about where it goes, but I uh, love when her brush is down and finishing the rocks. Yeah, good technique. Nine, five, seven, Not just about nine, five, seven, nine, five, seven, hitting the gym, it's about learning how to sweep too. Some of the best sweepers in the world may not look like 
the biggest, most muscular sweepers. Another cross house roll behind the corner. Look at that shot. We, we saw that two ends ago, and that one's really in a great spot. A great pair from Clairview to start the end with the corner and burying behind it. Now second, Emily Rubens here. Cross house roll under cover. This team doesn't blink when they get behind. Ella Fleming trying to peel that guard, open things up. The two seconds are sure trading blows too. It's been really fun to watch that uh, individual matchup. They've made a lot of shots at that position. Rolls a little bit to open those stones up. Benton says he's on his way to get in the building. <laughs> Tell him he can play. He can be our alternate. <laughs> well, somebody's got to carry the brooms, Pep. We've all done it. So. <laughs> I still get that treatment from Scott Jordan with okay. Rose's team. No matter what I accomplished in the sport, <laughs> yes. I always made sure to tell people I carried the brooms for their for his team. team. That's great. <laughs> and did a great job with that. Oh, just coming up on the. Okay, that's all right. Does roll over to, to guard up the number two and three counters, though. I didn't hear the weight call there, but a good result also clearing that center and. Um, Do we go here? Leaving a very lonely red in the middle of the sheet. I mean, I mean you leave it top eight, it's okay. Yeah. I'd like to sit second, though. Yeah. Right? Well, ideally. Or a straight, I don't think a straight guard's the call, right? No, I think. Okay, so. let's make this. Yep, you got it. Hey, you don't usually want to draw under corner guards without hammer, especially with the lead. But it's, I'm not sure that they have a better option right, right now, Pep. It's probably the right Where's shot. It's just wondering if she can make a throw peel at the outside of those two and yeah, maybe. for sure rip one and the other one might roll underneath shot rock maybe get him away hack, from the corner. Yeah. Maybe from the hack you have a little more of it, but they will stick with the come around draw. It's an important intern freeze here from Tessa Thurlow. Brushes down immediately. Down, Looks like has a long way to go to get there still. It's a little light. Sorry. Do you like that? Let's go. Oh, that was really loud. I didn't mean to do that. Actually. So playing the soft weight, hit and roll away now. Yep. So they may be yes. forcing Team Giroux yes. to continue to go under those guards now, the way they're set up. This is on the nose, it'll be a hit and roll. So they should have some room to roll to, and they have a stopper rock. I think that one's the highest of the three. Yeah, it's almost... Maybe easier to play it into the rocks versus trying to play that roll, but there is a fair amount of space with that stagger guard to, to roll under that as well. So Thurlow with the intern hit and roll attempt. One made one way to make up for the mistake is to use the rock you just threw as a guard. That's my bad. But Maybe a little bruised on the sweep and ends up just nosing. For team view right now, really, if you could roll under those guards with how high that stone is that you're hitting, you may have your opponent in jail. Ali apologizing for the sweep call, and we talked just having grace with teammates, calling all the sweeps and throwing last rocks is a, a tough task, so good for her to own that responsibility and, and apologize to her teammates and she'll probably have the right call in the next one. Hi, push. Okay. That one will roll out, but clear the red stone. 
you want here? Here? Here's okay. Yep, as long as we're under. Yeah. I want to give more line. What? Okay. So you want to be careful with how much more broom you take on this shot too, because now we're getting in that area where, especially on the wall side, you're outside the edge of the forefoot, it runs a little bit. And I think Thurlow's line was just fine on her first one. Yeah, just, just needed more weight. Just under threw it. I was just going to say that. I don't think they communicated on time. Maybe the sweepers are at this point, but um, Tessa's rock was not missed by much, just light. So we'll see if this Alley can get enough curl early to, to get under the guards. In turn, come around, draw, Ali Giroux. Ella's right now, Ella's right now. Sweeper saying it's a little deep. Got plenty Hold of room in. too. We'll finish, but it's a matter of how far this rock goes. Close, curl, curl. That's great. Set, Keep. Oof. That's very close for <laughs> Shot Rock. I think it's at least second. Yeah, at worst, second. The original thought was to like get that out and roll it yeah, like open. Yeah. Leaves Alley the same draw, but this time it would be against four, possibly. If you think you're shot rock, you could still throw the intern draw and beat your opponent to it. If you're sitting two, you still may get a chance to hit that stone on your last in the back. But the, the shot that kills your end right now is the intern draw. So making this hit and roll, you're daring your opponent to make it. To but if it's made, the there really isn't a great way to get to it. Yeah, it's hard. It, I think it depends on who, what, who shot rock at this point. And, I didn't hear which team. I heard right. a team saying that we're one. I just wasn't sure who it was. Yes. Yeah, if red is shot, then the hit is probably a good shot. If yellow is shot, then I think the draw is the better shot. Really high, gotta go. That just clips the guard. See if that rock holds onto the paint. Uh, the, the problem with the staggers, it's, the guard's still there when you click it, right? Right. Retrospect here is okay. So with how they're calling this shot, Pep, I, I think they believe their shot. So they're saying we're coming around, but it's okay to be short. Yeah. And if it was short and they weren't shot rock, they'd still leave a draw for two. They'd want to get to the house, yeah. So let's assume for the time being that red is shot. Local photographer Jeff Thompson on the side. Some great pictures coming up on the USA Curling page to, uh, for those not here to follow along with all the action. You see Corey TC looking on from her kind of cardboard cutout on the next sheet. The advertisement for USA Curling. Corey having another incredible season. Lots of room here on this one. Four, seven. I need this to bury a piece to not leave the double. A little bit of the problem with calling two shots, and I think one of the words where it could be a little short, is you get caught in between what you're throwing, and maybe the line was just a little off because of that. So there is a double for two. I don't know that you can keep the shooter and lose both reds. Unless you just play soft enough that they don't even leave the house, but get out of the eight foot. Hack, hack to board, possibly. Yeah, if you hit it thick half with board weight, you might be able to get three. Because again, both those reds only have to roll a couple inches once and the they make shooter contact. Shooter would stay in the touching the four on the other side. <laughs> that is there. Really precise shot. And a touchy line here, you're getting close to the center line. So it should curl. 
Final stone, fourth end, Megan McPhee. See how many they can come up with. It's a little bigger on weight than her previous shot. Yeah, she's a little worried on the release that this is hanging. Looks like that one will go right by. Maybe just a little flare on the release, but will be a steal of two for Team Giroux. We believe they're going to take a look to make sure. One for sure for red. Every team has the eyes of the team, right? Call in somebody to make sure if they want to measure it or, or call two here. Yeah, let's just keep bar. One for three, though. Yeah. Okay. So they're going to measure for the second point. Don't touch it. I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not going to touch it. Yeah. I'm going to stick with We're red from the overhead view and from what the teams are saying. What's your percentage this week on measurements? Yeah, only one and one. Okay. Not great, but we haven't had very many. I'm going to. I'm going to agree with you. I think you got two for two coming here. This looks like red to me. Yeah, I had an eight or nine and oh run at the men's and women's nationals. So impressive. Every loss is very disappointing. <laughs> we do have rings that are slightly off here at Eau Claire. Okay. See, this is the insider info now. <laughs> the late, late one practice with Team Haber, we decided to, to throw a bar around each of the rings and Saw some things that we didn't know all season. <laughs> so already one for red for Team Giroux, measuring for a second point. Already with a 5-3 lead. Well, I'm doing it with my nails. I mean, not so pleased with how that gauge is working. Hmm. Gonna tighten it again. I like watching. I don't know. I And it is red. But it is. So a steal of two gives Team Giroux a 7 3 lead after four ends of play. Points flying around early in this game. What happened there? After matching threes to start out, Team Giroux now with a two and a steal of two to go up 7-3 after four ends. Your pair of field goals turned into a touchdown and a field goal. Yeah. Got 7-3, uh, I guess with one team being purple, it's gotta be, <laughs> and one team being blue, maybe Lions over Vikings. There you go. I thought about saying Packers, but then saw the colors there. I really didn't <laughs> want to say that, so. Still a long ways to go in this game, though, and obviously 
I have, Team View showed that they can score. I have let Team View know how much I am not really in favor of the purple, but <laughs> I guess we'll take it. I'm on the other side of the coin there. <laughs> Some of us, it's hard to admit that we're Vikings fans with all the misery that you go through over the years. Every year is a new chance, though. <laughs> There's always next year. Yes. Just tattoo it on their foreheads. That's right. <laughs> Interesting, the comment about the ice. So, are you getting a little more curl or a little slower than what they expected? Okay. And that particular line inside of the sheet have usually been quick and straight. So if that turned over, maybe just caught a spot, who knows. I think they were trying to go in with both of those rocks and were surprised at how far they went or didn't go. Two years ago with Junior Nationals was in Stevens Point, Claire View's home club, and uh, her coach and, and dad, Chris, and Claire put together a, a, a trivia contest for the closing party. It's a big Stevens Point, Wisconsin thing. So shout out to Stevens Point and, uh, for that, kind of a... Cool event for the, all the people that were still around late that uh, Stevens Point Nationals. I didn't know many of the answers. <laughs> I assume curling trivia. Oh, no. All kinds of trivia. Oh, all okay. City trivia, national trivia. I'm pretty good at listening to other people share their answers too loud, though, so I do contribute <laughs> to my team by eavesdropping. That pays to be a good listener, Mike. Trying that same line, it seems like they didn't quite get the same speed again. So rocks piling up in the front now. Maybe seeing some kind of shift in speed as both teams are struggling with the speed. The type of setup you might see in the first end of a game, Mike, when the speed surprises both teams. Sure, yeah, when they're just trying to get used to it. But with practice, we don't see that too often. The teams are usually dialed in on weights. And, um, team view certainly trying to Put a few more rocks in play to give himself a chance at getting a deuce or maybe a three back here. I did ask Ella about the, the glove and hand, and she said her fingers get cold. So she has to get the glove right back on. It's important. Make sure the fingers don't get too cold out there. In that very short amount of time, huh? <laughs> that finishes up to get a piece underneath. So view looking like they want to open things up to have some kind of path in. The good thing with this double peel is if they make it, they have all kinds of corner guards still. It's a chance maybe the, the rock springs into to bite the house if it's made perfectly. Curl. Moves two yellow stones and rolls close to the center line. We can do this. Yeah, I like it tap. Yeah, I like the okay. idea from Giroux here as long as there's that pile of stones in the front. I it's kind of too late to play defense, so the best defense is just getting another one in the house. I think I'm probably tapping that red. Maybe can make that same outturn path they made. It's a little tight, but they do know that line. So they're going to play the tap on that tight red guard. Yeah, so I'll probably try to throw back line with this rock. Oh. 
gets anywhere through that hole and makes contact with the stone, they should get a good result. Needs to get off the yellow stone first. Looks like it should get by it. Or either redirect. Taps to that open hole. So Claire could maybe play some offense and draw through with a right onto those rocks that are back there, especially T line possibly. Yeah, it looks like they're hitting the center guards. Trying to clear things up a little more. That's okay. That was a good little bonus and at least moves that redstone to the side 12 foot. <laughs> Makes the scoring area a little bigger. And that center guard is the most useful one of any of the guards too, being a yellow stone. So much better situation than it was. Drew wasting no time and continuing to attack with the draw. Thurlow playing the intern draw. It's gone. Maybe getting a little soft out there, having both teams struggling with draws here. Maybe thinking they can get the shooter on as well, but with the red sitting too, it's going to be tough to get a biter to end up counting this end. Touchdown. Yeah. Company. Yeah, always line. In turn draw, trying to get a counter in now. Okay. Ella Wendling. Got it. Got it. Got it. Really hard line. Yep. Trying to hold it to get by. Does wreck the guard, so. They're looking like they want to take that port away. There is a yellow, yellow tap on the guards now. The good news for Team Giroux at this point is there's not a lot of danger of giving up. Obviously, two is probably max at this point, unless they make something for them, so. At most, a deuce, and if they can get a force out of it and potentially a steal, that's that's a bonus at this point. Okay, don't play normal though. Okay. Top top. Guards okay. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, a guard is totally. Okay. Hey guys, it's kind of picking. I don't want to clean it, but. So trying to take that draw path away. Just get something in that port. Ali Giroux with the out turn draw. This one curling hard as well. Probably good enough to take away the intern draw, so that double tap looks like the shot. That is where Claire View is going up. right away. And Mike, these are the ones where you always have to throw a little more than what you think. We talk about the, the rock transfer, and the more rocks you add to a tap, the harder you have to throw it in order to get the last stone to go, so you're really adding two or three more feet yeah. for each rock that's added to it. So they're calling back eight. We'll see if that's enough weight to move it. And then in addition to that, then brooming for it because the rock travels less and it's gonna have more weight onto it. It looks like um, he's probably gonna take almost six to eight inches less than the normal draw path to this spot. 
In turn, bump attempt for Megan McPhee. Starting to curl now. Still a ways to go. And as you said, Mike, just, just over broomed a little. Kind of needed to cut the broom down a bit. Her weight looked really good. Yeah. I think that's pretty much exactly what they needed. So now a difficult path in again. What to cover for Allie at this point? Maybe the the corner on the right might be the easiest way. The rock on the center line also is accessible with that same intern that Megan just threw. Yeah, if you throw a mid guard on the center line, then you take away the out turn draw through the hole and the intern tap. Right? Yeah, Tess has got it. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's really good. I think that's your best shot. And then you just leave her that corner, either slashing in or at the. Draw or, or hit weight. They can't take them all away, so she try to take the two easiest ones away and force that out turn tap that you were talking about on the outside yellow stone. This is really holding on this line, though. So both stones, or both shots, still available. Megan likes the one that she just I threw. Like, I, I, like, I think I mean, that's probably the one they know the best at this double? point. I don't want to, but like then don't. Should we? No. no. <laughs> if you miss that, they get two again. I think. I mean, I this is fine. I like this. Well, the worst thing is if you miss anything, you get they get two again. <laughs> Correct. You gotta, gotta get one to the forefoot here. So I think which, they, whichever one you like the most. I thought I heard them that. talking about a double, but I really don't see much. Maybe a really a tough Slash, shot, a tenth, tenth yeah. end shot if you need it for two, because they do have the biter on. But uh, I think getting one right here and turning the momentum would be most important. Final stone in the first half of this game. Megan McPhee trying to make a tap against two to keep her team in striking range. Line's getting close on the tap now. Will the, the weight, weight be there? there? Yeah. Looks like it just came up short on him. And does come up short. So will be another steal of two. Giroux now with a 9-3 lead at the break, and halfway through, it's time for the Broomfitters break. Broomfitters.com is the place for good curling gear and fast shipping on everything curling. For a limited time, take 10% off your first order with the code USA. Visit Broomfitters.com.
the spin around the sheets at the end of the break. Miranda Shield with a 3-2 lead over Nia Berg on sheet A. Sheet B, Julia Pekowitz leads 5-2 over Gracia Berg. On sheet C, Ava Chapman, 4-3 over Allery Johnson in the sixth. Our feature game, Ali Giroux, now with a 9-3 lead over Claire View. Tyler George here with Olympian Junior National Champion, Mike Poplinski. Mike, we gotta remind John Landsteiner, it's always faster <laughs> after the break as we see that rock going through to start off the sixth. We talked about it last game, the magic mop. It's does it, Maybe it's lifting the pebble back up and the it rock's riding, right? I think that we're gonna stick with that theory for a bit. Good adjustment by, by Claire to throw hers in a good spot. Yeah, if you're team view, you, you're down six. You're not out of the game yet because you've shown you can put up big numbers. Obviously, Team Zero will be playing a little more defensively with this big lead, but just focus on getting it two or three. Still have five ends to go. Get yourself within range to have a chance. Yeah, Savannah Cook in her second game this week. She is rotating with Brooke Giroux. I was able to clarify that uh, at the break. This one coasting as well. Should stop back eight. In addition to the mop, they did have the whatever happened last end where all the rocks ended up a bit short. So um, just a tough adjustment there for Sav. Yeah, maybe a shift in the earth and the sheet is slanted back towards the glass and the mop. So make it that much faster. Helping me with excuses for when I miss shots next year in league. Oh, there's a million. I'll give you a list if you need more. Push. Yeah, gotta go. Push. Push, Emily. Yep. Yep, all the way. With my coaching now, I feel like I, 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 I'm back to knowing what the right shot is, and now I can't do the right shot anymore. So this darn game is just really hard. So that rock settles into the top 12, top 8, but open. It's an easy decision for Ali Giroux to hit that stone. One thing I noticed this week, we see it behind the glass at the other view is Anya Norman do coaching this team. We got Aiden Oldenburg helping with Team Chapman, Connor Kaufman helping with Team Shield. A lot of the players that have just aged out of juniors in the last handful of years coming back to help out and give their knowledge of the game to these young, talented players. And it's, uh, it's really neat to see. Yeah, I had Connor in the booth this morning's draw. He's done a couple this week and has in the past at some other events too and really got to spend some time with Aiden Oldenburg at the mixed doubles. Hadn't talked with him much before but such a nice guy. Got Great. to chat curling and you know always good natured. Uh, very insightful when it comes to the sport. Interesting story with Aiden back from the Nationals that were here four years ago and he was on a different team and the team that I was coaching uh, Coleman Thurston was uh, placed onto an HP team at that time. So Coleman went to play uh, with another team and we were looking for a player and Aiden topped the list. And boy, what a what a great year. It happened to be the COVID year. So we did have uh, all kinds of trouble figuring out how to teach and play and all those things. But but Aiden was a, was a good learner and um, talented kid. And we ended up uh, playing in the national final against uh, that kid, Danny Casper. <laughs> The young punk, that kid. <laughs> so a couple of rocks in the rings now for Team View. Ella Fleming having another go at this hit. This one gets across the center line a little earlier. Should be a better result. Ella seems to like it in the background. Close to the double. A bit thin, close. A good attempt. Claire maybe generating a three here, getting under the corner guard with another biter in play. We had an end earlier today with each team having two biters. Boy, the strategy going was on full overload there, trying to figure out what to do. Top, 
and, and getting back to the coaching angle too, Mike, with things like that is you, f you find that juniors and less experienced players are always trying to figure out what the right shot is or what would my coach do or yeah. what would they want me to do. And when I've worked with teams, I've always told them, don't think about what I would do and don't think about right or wrong. Think about your objective for the end. How do you get to what you want to do or what you're trying to do? And don't make it into something where you think you could make a right or wrong call. But just always look at the rock positions. And when you have those meetings before every end, think about what the score is, where we're at in the game, what are we trying to accomplish, and let that make the decision for you. So important. And the, also, the other part of that, the other end of that coin, is, is making, making the shot, making a 100% shot. If you have two shots and you know you can make one and one's a little trickier, boy, a made shot in curling is a really important thing. So always choosing the shot that you know you're going to make. That line running a little straighter there than it was a few ends ago. And that sticks around in the 12 foot. It's okay, just positive. So this end looking similar to the end, View got three. Agree. And the second with these rocks spread out. I don't mind going here. I love the idea of going onto the corner right now. Intern draw attempt now for Ella Wendling, her first descend. Touch line. Back line. Four. Back four. Teaching juniors the, the level of strategy is a very fragmented thing, right? You can only give so much, and, and a lot of times it's age appropriate readiness, too, as a teacher. The, I can teach whatever I want in fourth grade, but they're not ready until they're ready. So it's telling it a number of times and then also um, having them hear it and feel it at the right time. So our game is very complex, and, and I think we're all still growing in our knowledge. So neat to see kids at this age uh, taking their bits and pieces as they can and putting the time in to watch curling, to listen to you. We talked about that the last broadcast. It sure helps. Just a couple feet. You can see Ali Giroux here really knows I'm not supposed to draw here, <laughs> but the way the rocks are lined up, I think I have to. And but she, she called <laughs> She called back line, so they think that they can still tap that stone on this angle. That rock is going sideways. Yeah. No, there's no And this is going to be on the nose of this stone, so. Oofta. Did it pick? Claire attempted to try to hit those and sit four, but I still think that intern come around sure makes the, the end look nicer. Control. I don't want to throw control back here. Okay. That's just very normal. Yep. I like Tessa coming down for a chat here too. She really was confused on why that rock turned over the way it did. She still has another one left. They have plenty of time. They're getting into a key situation. Let's make sure we're on the same page. So we may have to throw a similar shot. Nice hit here, so. Few sitting four. Pile of yellow stones in the house now. Yeah, even if you just go here, that's okay. Yeah. How brave is Allie at this point? Yeah. <laughs> She's looking at the yeah. scoreboard. Playing this hit again. And really, she knows if she plays the hit, she's not giving up more than four. Because even if they come under the center again, mm -hmm. you're probably still hitting the open one. Make your opponent hit and stick on their last. Yeah. Didn't roll okay, but I'd like to get the double. So there's Playing a double the there. Sure, like hitting and staying. Yeah! If the double isn't made, oh! it takes that fighter on the other side away. <clears throat> Gets on the wrong side and rolls out. <coughs> They're going to throw to the open, and now is when you have the discussion about do we throw that draw or not. Because if they draw open, you do have the freeze to kill the end with no way to get it out. 
doesn't have to be perfectly made, but are you willing to risk five as opposed to sure. hitting and guaranteeing only four uh, and staying up two with hammer? We did point out that they, they didn't get under that corner as well as they had uh, two ends ago, maybe four ends ago. I can't remember which end it, ho it was coming home, but uh, that path changed on them a little, and it just ran a bit straighter. So it would be a little riskier now than, than maybe when they knew the path perfect. Yeah, Megan McPhee drawing to the open side. Should lose some speed as it curls to the outside. Team nine might be through. One does go through. That's a big point there. Yeah. I think yeah. that makes your decision a little yeah, easier no, too. Okay. Yes, yep. for playing sure. the hit. You're playing the other turn here, Allie. Yeah, I think so. Like. This is pretty good. Yeah. You're probably going to go here, though. Yeah, I think anywhere staying and making Megan play a hit for the three versus the free draw. You know, they are looking at trying to get the, the roll underneath, but I don't think they can sit second underneath that. Throwing the weight that they're most comfortable with here would be probably a wiser choice. Open hit and stick for Ali Giroux. A lot of weight on this one. Girl, girl. Looks like this will roll off. It's the stopper stone, but still That's goes fine, out. Allie. So it's a draw to the paint You're okay. for three for You're view. Megan McPhee looking to touch the house for a third point. Get this within three. Final stone of the sixth. Supers tend to like it. Seven, Just cleaning it in, and that will be three. Team View cuts the deficit in half. After six ends of play, the score now 9-6. Giroux leads. City's Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. Not a pitcher's duel here this afternoon in this women's draw four. Claire View with their second three of the day, now trailing 9-6 after six ends. You see our other score sheet, A. Miranda she leading 4-2 in the sixth over Nia Berg. Julia Pekowitz leading 5-2 in the sixth on sheet B over Gracia Berg and sheet C. Allery Johnson, a 5-4 lead in the seventh on Ava Chapman. Nice tight three guard there by Claire to keep the pressure on Team Drew. You mentioned not a pitcher's duel opening day coming soon. 
Right around the corner. Did have a couple of games in South Korea already this season, but tomorrow, Major League action. Gets back in. I'm a big baseball guy, Mike, so I'm, I'm pumped the season's back. Coming down. Would like my home state twins to just stay a little bit healthy this season. Yeah. Hard, 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 hard. Long seasons, but fun to That's watch right. and great entertainment. That stone in the back of the forefoot, but open. And you'd rather have that stone open but if it's behind the T line than under the guard with the hammer here in the seventh. So not a bad spot. Both teams seem like to have found draw weight a little better again. They had the little pick up in the fifth end. That one just skates by again, that straight line that we see outside the four foot line on that <laughs> side of the sheet. So Savannah Cook. Can he get another stone in the rings? And just pile up as many in the house as you can at this point. Trying to get this to finish to get close to nose of that stone if they can. Kate. Not too bad. She's giving them out. Okay. That's fine. You talked uh, a few ends ago about the, the goal of the end and what, what to call to, to meet the goal of the end. And I would assume Team View, after that bounce back three, is definitely in, in force mode. If a steal presents itself, they'll probably uh, try to capitalize on that. But the more rocks, the merrier. And not too many that are, are hurting them at this point. Emily Rubenzer. Hard line, gotta go. The southpaw trying to play the out turn, come around draw. Perfect line, but just coming up a little short of the rings. You may see some guards leaving after that. Well, looking like they're going around again now. I thought she was walking up for the peel as well. Yeah. I saw her coming forward. I guess they've decided to go for the throat here in the seventh. But you could pretty easily clear those two yellow guards with how they're angled and keep the front wide open. So Mike, it'll probably be one of those situations where it either gets them in the trouble or they put up a big end. Yeah, maybe a little too aggressive for my liking with the three point lead in the seven. Yeah, it's all about objectives again, just like we talked about. What, what's your goal going into this end based on the score and where we're at in the game? And that number one objective would be keep things open. Don't let the other team steal. Because even means. if you take a point, it's not that bad. But okay. with them playing aggressive, if you keep things open, then it's very unlikely you're going to give up a steal. And the two or three may present itself. Agree. Yeah, for sure. Looking at uh, good options here, and I think Megan yelled down that she liked the double, so Emily trying to remove both red stones and maybe roll under that staggered guard. Pretty close here. And just whiskers the second red, but rolls to a good spot. We'll see if Allie goes to the peel at this point. It's close, I think we gotta go draw. I think we're peeling. Okay. <laughs> Quick conversation there. Tessa's experience shining, shining through one more time. Right? She's seen a lot of, a lot of games, a lot of ends set up. So has Allie. Allie just maybe hasn't seen it from the skips view, and it's great for Tessa to, to chime in there. Just need to hit this a little high for Fleming. Try to lose both of these. Looks like a pretty good throw there. 
That looks Real perfect. solid weight, absolutely. Very well done. Good clean throw there. She had a little trouble on the wide side in the previous end on the intern. That one came out clean, right up the broom. Perfect shot. I like sitting. Pro side's a little tap. Claire coming into the house with either a freeze or a tap. Could yeah. throw another guard to try to see if uh, Team Drew leaves it but as they still enter thirds rocks. So Ella Wendling, the out turn, G. freeze attempt. Coach Jim Wendling putting in double duty here, helping with Ella's team and Wes's team. He needs some uh, extra caffeine as he gets to those later draws each day. I might let him steal one of my Diet Dr. Peppers that there I've been is. hammering away on and have to thank the good people of the Eau Claire Curling Club for supplying me with a, a steady supply of those cans. And I, I've made the joke about them being a, a makeshift sponsor, not an official <laughs> one, with how many of those cans I consume throughout the week. But I really don't drink them anywhere but broadcasting keeps, keeps things. the voice healthy, I don't right? have them at home, yeah. So <laughs> yeah! it's worked in my favor in that everywhere I go to call games, there seems yeah! to be some oh, waiting for me. Go. <laughs> Same thing happened in it's okay. uh, Traverse City. Nice double there as we're talking about Good. Diet Soda. Really well done. Yeah, well thrown. Well, well but I had a 12-pack waiting for me in Traverse City. I had a 12-pack waiting for me here. Yep. Some of the players at, at the mixed doubles talked about the – the host committee taking care of them with purchasing um, just things of their liking. What a, what a great gesture by Traverse City and nothing but, but great uh, vibes coming from that event. Yeah, I myself may have been gifted a bottle of something from a local establishment that I was able to take home. It was a, a very nice gesture. And I think uh, CEO Gemmel may have gotten the same treatment. Nice. That same track that's ran, runs one more time, just a little straighter than expected. Yeah, that has consistently stayed straighter and faster than anywhere else on the sheet. And really all week that's been the case too. the red, that's okay. Yeah, and you got this double. I think we just, yeah, just that's good. Can I throw the same turn? Good shot of those patrons, club members, family members. Significant others in the stands. Another nice crowd this afternoon. Close. Expecting a packed yeah. crowd throughout, yeah. especially into the weekend for the Close. playoffs. Yes. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah Eau Claire's done a nice job promoting the event and I think having, having a home team here, I felt like the crowd was right on top of me last night as we were playing against Team, team Sinzali. It was uh, a little noisy, some, some applause going, so really a cool feel. And, we talked about Traverse City taking care of the teams. I know the Eau Claire host committee also had host families for each team. So just a little goodie bag and some information about the, the town of Eau Claire and the area is for, for people coming from out of town so they know where they can go for groceries and out to eat and those types of things. So a nice gesture by the, by the committee. Events like these don't run themselves. Uh, no, they do not. The amount of volunteer effort. I've seen a lot of club members here this week and uh, committing their time a couple hours before each shift to the ice committee or uh, getting the kitchen ready, cleaning up after others. It's really been a, a solid effort by many. Megan McPhee trying to get this freeze all the way to that stone in the back of the forefoot that's going to come up short maybe mike just a little different track so curled up lost a little speed more than we'd seen on yeah. that draw a path outside the forefoot line caught its break point much sooner and probably just had a little less weight and turned over might not be the end of the world for team view to have that rock and play put some pressure on Allie to put this rock in a good spot your pro side is light, though. Yeah. Okay, you gotta go to Lincoln here. A good call here by Team Giroux. There's really only two shots here. You're either peeling that guard to open things up or you're coming around 
and trying to put up a three. And I, I don't think it's a right or wrong one at this point. Earlier in the end, I think you want to keep things clean. With this shot, they, they feel like they have a very good chance of getting a hammer lock on the game by playing this draw. I'll keep this just above the tee line again and really put a lot of pressure on the other team. And that's the key. As long as you're above the tee, then you get a good result here. Line looks really good. Just has to sit. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, turning in really nice. Really good shot. Oof. Not many times I look at a situation, try to figure out a, a, a tough way for the other team to sit shot at the end of the, the shot. Yeah, that's really well placed by the sweepers. Great throw by Ali Giroux. And that's one where the tendency is, oh, we got great line, let's just hammer it to the button. But no, that's the perfect spot for that stuff. Left, left it perfectly. Maybe the nose run back here and nose to that pocket. They can sit underneath cover, sitting one. Not a lot, not a lot left for team view. Tough shots all around. been in this situation many times you're trying to move the stones with your mind yeah, I'm, I'm predicting a timeout coming here I mean but that isn't horrible no, but if they pick it out they're probably jamming what is that doing they're still sitting three and maybe you could kind of squeak in there with an intern draw just this? tick off the edge of that red and Spin a, in a little bit to get. Suppose you could wrap around the, the, the intern side and sit shot. Give her a short run for four, though. That's it. I think that might be. I a think they're That's your play. call, Tyler. Like yeah, I'm, I mean it's really tough, like, but oh. if you are looking at that spot, the only place you really can go is maybe with back 12 weight, back line. Get as close to the guard as you can and try to just wiggle with those two and sit underneath. Megan has thrown a handful of rocks on this line, though, so they do have a good good grasp of what's happening here. Yeah, the tough part is you you have to get to the second stone first. Sounds like they're playing control, though. So actually playing the hit. So they don't have much space to go to here. So McPhee trying to get as close to the guard as she can. It's just going to nose that top stone. So there will be a draw for three. Could throw the exact same one if they like. Nose is good enough. So she will. Allie likes the, the same path. Yeah, they controlled that really well. I love that 4-7 again. Right to the rock she just threw with somewhere around T weight. Got to be a good chunk in the floor. We gotta be touching four. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So final stone here in the seventh end. Ali Giroux just trying to repeat the same draw she threw on the outturn I side. <laughs> the head tilt. <laughs> trying to find her line around the sweepers. It looks pretty close again. Starting to turn over, needs to dead run hit the brakes. A little faster path, a little farther out. Clicks the back one and Shoot. spills a little too far, we think. Might just be two. two. And it right. is. Oh, shucks. So two more. Widens that gap now to 11 6 after seven ends. And USA Curling would like to take this moment to thank the curling community for supporting the sport and the national organization, whether it's through your membership, donations, or volunteer hours that help our game grow. Your support makes many of our efforts possible, whether it's the webcast coverage you're enjoying right now, the Our House content platform, 
certification programs for instructors and officials, or the Athlete Outreach Initiative. On behalf of USA Curling, thank you for all that you do. So start of the eighth here. Team Giroux leading 11-6. Going right into the house with their first. Good shot by Savannah Koch. Sweepers drag that stone all the way over, get it across the hog line for a guard. Trying the other side out for their corner guard. They've had success playing offense in these home ends. And the two ends that they've scored three, Mike, both times they've spread things out wide. You know, nothing bunched up around the center, but going to the edges. Obviously with hammer, you prefer to go to the edges anyways, but really spreading stones out, Stop making it. Team Giroux play inside Where? out shots. Where? It's been the recipe for success for View. See if Team View stacks another corner on that same side underneath it, or if they chase the rocks in the center. They will go under that corner guard. So this is one you wouldn't mind if it was either tight guard or top 12. Anything deeper with how high the guard is, probably can dig it out regardless of what line it's on, whether it's around the inside or outside. Looks like that's going to be in the house. They get enough curl on it here. It's pretty well placed, but you could probably dig that out still with yep. solid hack. Okay. They don't like what they can see from the hack apparently, so they're gonna elect to just tap in the middle. Ella Fleming playing the outturn tap. Top four. Trying to improve the position Top of that four. higher red stone. Where? Top four! T line! Top four! T! T line! Go to the back red! To the back red! Whoa, we're good. Back eight! It just I touches like that, that red over and no, spills to the side of the forefoot. Shoot. Gives a pocket for Claire to put a rock in if she'd like to. Yeah, that may be something they can use at some point during the end. Emily Rubenzer. Oh. 
trying to roll in off of this put. top counter. Hard put. Ends up just being nose. hitting the top stone and trying to avoid backing. I like this. Ellis had a number of, of hits today and been very successful. I still remember the her second shot of the, the game being a big hit and roll to start off that three end in the first. So uh, solid play by, by all players on, on teams. And this one looks like another good one being swept by Tessa. Yeah, nicely done. I like keeping the weight solid on that shot too. Take the ice out of it. Make sure you clear the stone. Good. Yeah, just like throw that. it clean and let it go. It's something some of your old teams did too. <laughs> the first I can remember watching that said, "Put the broom where you want to hit it." That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. Nice shot, Sauce. <laughs> yeah. Learned to throw it really hard in my early days. Yeah. Which is kind of funny because right now I feel like through coaching, I'm, I'm awfully aggressive and, and want to play 10 ends of curling and we don't want to throw it overhand all the time. We <laughs> like, to, like to put rocks around and, and see if we can out position people. That hit and roll rolls to the outside 12 foot. Out. Yeah. Firm. Yeah. So inside out. Out turn hit attempt yes. for Thurlow. Yes. Yes. We've seen this shot missed on the narrow side, narrow side more times than others. Really good. Go, go, Real good, poking it away from that corner really guard. Good. Yeah, that's a great shot. Well done by Thurlow. Really good. She's played solid today. Coach, former coach Can Mike Moore texted that and, he taught her everything she knows. That's funny, Mike taught me everything I knew. And I'm older. <laughs> I'm just not sure just so I'm much knowledge to give. Not. Does such a great job with our junior teams. It's really nice to have Mike on board and Swiss Helm this year coaching the, the junior men's team. We have uh, great people working with our, with our youth. I don't mind it. Yeah, as somebody that's known Mike a long time, known Annie a long time, I know what they can bring to the table for these young squads. And just great assets to have to lead these teams to and show them like the right it. way to do things, not just the right shots to play. Normal. Good release, though. Right to the brim. Mike's father has the, the uh, mother has the Chris Moore Legacy Fund, and my team has benefited from that, from the U18 championships. Right. And, getting a chance to go to tournaments, and um, that grassroots program has really helped uh, many, many a youth curler in, in the United States. So really thankful for that and what's that's, that's provided for our, for our curlers too. A really good result there. Not much of a double left. Nine five. So like to, they'd like to get three if they can this end, get within two, but Going to need to use. Ooh, that's really steep, Allie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That might be a little bit thin on the outside. It's steep. Love hitting and rolling in front. Do you want to go which way? Normal takeout. Thurlow just trying to yes. roll to the opposite side Whoa. of the forefoot Whoa. in front of that other yellow counter. Yes. Whoa. We have to roll. 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 
Pretty good shot. Great pair by Tessa this end. So there's a hit and roll available to get under the corner now too if they can cross this. Looks like Ella's asking for the other turn coming into the stone instead of across the face. I still like this yeah, you can make it with either one. There's, there should be plenty of room around that guard, but Claire likes the view of this turn better. So out turn hit and roll attempt for Ella Wendling. Yeah. Yeah. Ella's a high school golfer at Wausau High School. Wausau right West, on. excuse me. Yeah, really curling now on this line. Yeah, one of those when the shooter's not real comfortable with the way that that line looks. Sometimes you lean towards what they like. You know, I, I always appreciated that playing with, with John Schuster. That you know, if, if, a, if a line looked better for me, he always wanted me to say and play the one that I liked. Yeah, the, the phrase, what are you seeing, right? You hear quite often these days. Like that's great that John like allowed way. you to call okay. that. We got a lot of room. Nine five. Or, okay. You got a good one here, Allie. Even if, even if you pick it, I think that's okay. Yeah. Nine five nose. The important thing now is make it go away. I don't think nose is a bad spot at all here. I'm in a rough spot. In turn, hit for Allie Giroux. Curling earlier yep, than expected, yep, yep, but yep, looks yep. good. No roll. Good. Yeah, that's a good I spot really to like roll to. I don't think the double and roll I mean, honestly, under the corner loses both stones. This is so you probably here. not shot rock it? making it now. Rolled it just far enough for that. Sometimes you can bait the team in by hitting I nose to, to maybe they either play on it or try to guard it and they leave you a shot for two, so. Megan could go try to play nose on this. Do you like normal? Okay. So keep the back one and then they'll have a hard. Playing the hit on these stones, we'll see where the shooter ends up. As you said, Mike, if you can stay right on the nose on this, maybe your best chance at two. Push. Hard push. Just sprung wide. Team Drew with the with the force. Yeah. Yep, just looking for. A little roll to the like center, and maybe force your opponent into playing the what? hit. And hitting a stone that's not no, shot rock. Out turn hit. Final stone of the eighth for Ali Giroux. Ella Fleming Keep holding the line right really well on this one. Yeah, good sweep to keep that stone oh. around. That definitely thought they were a little tight out of hand. Megan elects to play the draw for one. Looks like she's throwing it just to the T line and not onto backing with that broom. That's a tricky line to throw for backing with it just getting to the center line and sure then is. cutting when it gets across. I kind of like just playing this to the clean draw. Take that out of play completely. Just think draw. Don't yeah. even consider that red stone. Hand it to your sweepers to put on the on the pit. Final stone, eighth end. Megan McPhee looking for draw to the forefoot for her single. Line five. 
Starting to turn over a little early. This should maybe, take speed maybe off. Maybe she'll get backing here. Sure enough, it's going to overcurl. <laughs> right, right on the back, just like we said. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Never doubt. They do get their single. Now 11-7, Giroux leads after eight. And ladies and gentlemen, Warm Room Hero is more than just software. They're curlers dedicated to building long-term relationships with your club. Warm Room Hero provides continuous support to ensure your website exceeds your members' expectations. Check out Warm Room Hero today at curling.club. That's Warm Room Hero at curling.club. Another look at the scores on the other sheets for this draw. Naya Berg now leading Miranda Shield 7-4 on sheet A in the ninth end. Sheet B, Julia Pekowitz leading Gracia Berg 7-2 in the eighth. Allery Johnson with a 7-6 advantage in the ninth over Ava Shatman on sheet C. And of course our feature sheet, sheet D. Ali Giroux, 11-7 lead on Claire View in the ninth with Hammer. Tyler George with Mike Poplitsky. Top four! Mike, the points just keep piling up, although a little unusual to see a single. <laughs> first that's one our of, first one of the game. First one of the game. I have noticed that that at other uh, championships this year, just a lot of, lot of teams get into nine and 10, which is, I think seven was the, the lucky number back in, in our playing days, Tyler. There was a stat at one point, well before the free guard zone rule, that if you got to seven first, you won. Um, not so sure that would hold in today's scoring. That Claire View is going to need a lot more than seven to win this game now. You'd like to think if you're Ali Giroux, the first to 11 is good enough. <laughs> All right, U18. Championship, our local news media didn't quite understand the curling scoreboard, so they scored it like a baseball scoreboard, and we did win 18 to 11. 18 to 11, snuck it out. In eight ends. <laughs> In eight, wow. I don't even want to try to count what the score would be in this one. Which turn on the throw? 2016? So that's, that's what it looks like, 2016. <laughs> But we did hear that the scoreboard online was showing that there, this is a 23 end game. Ooh. So we're, we're not even halfway through this one. We could get to <laughs> 30 for a winning score. How many Diet Dr. Peppers and will the ice hold? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the two questions. <laughs> we can assure you this is a 10 end game, folks. So a couple guards up for team view. Trying to jumble things up and set up a steal of some kind. And draw settles into the side of the button for Team Giroux. And leads Savannah Coke. Nice guards up from Claire View as well. Taking her place in the house. Really like the game that Emily Rubenzer's put together today. Seems to have a steady slide release and accuracy with all her throws. Maybe a finish, I see a goal, back eight. 
playing the out turn draw here and trying to get it to settle at least somewhere in the rings. Just touches that red stone to slow it down a bit. Stops in the back eights. And now here is where the those guards are going to be the ones that you may look at as the ones that hurt you. Coming in again, trying to keep the opponent chasing with more and more stones in the rings. Last peel that Fleming threw, she made perfectly too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, she seems to throw right around an eight second, maybe sub eight, and, and a lot of rocks moving when she, she throws that accurately. This one gliding by on that same track, right to that yellow stone. So that same freeze available now for view. I'm the play. Just a touch less. That team drew. Sounds like they looked back at their, their previous game, so maybe they'll look at the situation and see if clearing a center a, a few ends ago, or maybe in this situation might be more advantageous as they move further on in the week. Good line here on this one. Really high See throw. if they can carry the weight oh, down yeah. all the way to that stone on the tee for the freeze. Not really okay. Does hit the brakes. Better position. I think straight can always draw around. Oh, here. Careful not to line it up though. I think we use our time. The timeout being called. See if, I believe Anya Normando came out before for timeout. We'll see if coach says let's start clearing some stuff up and open this up a little bit. Or if they do decide to guard, we'll listen in. New rule this year as Anya's on her, her travel time is that the opposing coach can come out to the home end as long as the team calling timeout is out there. It is a World Curling Federation rule. Um, certainly a, a nice touch, I think, to allow the, the other team to not just stand around and talk by themselves. We get to listen in on their, what their coach has to say as well. So just straight guard? Then probably... Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I like this yeah. Anya is a former UWEC student and Tesla. curled at the Eau Claire We've Curling Club. You got to play a game of mixed doubles with her. A few different games, I believe. So, uh, great okay. player in her own right. A little more then. Yep. We can always curl it. Yeah. So they are going to throw the guard over on this side. Our, like two and a half. Okay. Two is fine. Okay. Go for it, Ella. You got a nice one. The nice setup here in the club, and just beyond our view, Tyler, we can see uh, the stream that we're watching and commentating on on a live TV and, and the ice crew is look, can't get a seat in, in the good seats, so they're back here watching the, the side stream. So yeah, it, is, it is interesting to watch people watching your stream yeah, correct. from yeah. 20 feet away yeah. on a screen that's bigger than the one you have for right. the monitor here, too. <laughs> that screen will become very useful as the week goes on. The, the crowds have been healthy, and it uh, might be a great place to, for others to watch. And that one ends up just in the top of the 12 foot in the outside ice. So really doesn't cover up the shot they were trying to prevent. So now a short raise for team view. Do you like hack or just playing draw to say? Yeah. Which one? The raise. What? Wait. Raise. The tap. I know. What weight do you want to throw? Do you want to throw it back to eight? sit I don't or know. to tap it back? Just give it a little bump. 
I can't hear you. Just down two. Okay. Otherwise, they hit you it like out. back eight. Yes. Back okay. Claire and Megan trying to clarify exactly what they want here, back not four. just the raise. They want to talk about the weight that's back played on four. it as well. That's a good one to give yourself a little margin for error on, too. Because if you throw it to exactly the weight you need for the rock to stop on a freeze, if you're short by even just a little bit and offline even by an inch or two, you're not going to get there. So you heard back line. I like that type of weight a lot more for this shot just because it does give you margin for error. A little easier to steer, too, for the sweepers. Not the result they wanted, but also not bad either. Underneath the, the guards and yeah, it actually opens that number one counter up. Shot too. rock is available. Four. That's an old Craig Disher shot. Here. Chip the guard yeah, over into the coming. rings instead of playing oh, the peel yeah. and open up the counter. Yep, I think so. Good memory. Wow. The things you remember from a long time ago <laughs> and not I, from earlier I today. Here? I think I blacked that one out because that happened way too many times <laughs> against, me, against Craig. North Dakota legend Craig Disher played many years with Kevin Kakala. Learn a lot from those guys about offensive curling, especially yes. in setting up big ends. They could throw it really hard, but they also had the, the beautiful touch on shots like you're talking about. Yes, they no. do play offensive curling in North Dakota, too. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Taps their own back and still sits Bye count. Dad. Now still sitting with one. Or on the back ones. Quite a good representation from North or Dakota here this week. Absolutely. Two, two playing in our game. I know we have Miranda Shields in our field, and the guys have two full teams from North Dakota in the, in the guys' field. I might be missing somebody, so I don't want to uh, neglect those those folks as well. But uh, quite a few of them here uh, representing their great state. And all these rocks in play in the, the high-scoring games make me think of the offensive scoring minds I remember from our days. You know, learning from guys like Bob McGee and Tim Wright and, and even the, the counterparts that played around our time. I remember the the term we used when Amy Beecher played, and wow. there was a million rocks in play, and it was called a beach house. <laughs> there you go. We had a ceremonial first stone thrown by Jeff Goodland here this okay. week, speaking of offensive curling and rocks in play. Yeah, no kidding. Is that rock just tapped a little farther back onto the button, but gives a little space on the inside. How's your finger? Try to get in there. And Pep, I remember six or seven shots ago when we were looking at those two <laughs> guards thinking, I could open things up and then just play it clean out. And they are still there. <laughs> that did not end up being the case. I believe this is the 12th rock of the end, and I'm counting 11 of them in front of us. <laughs> so Tessa Thurlow playing. This in turn, I think chip and roll, trying to get to the inside of that yellow stone. If it gets by, it looks really, really good. And does squeak by. Great throw. Okay. That's a good spot for that one. Moves both yellow stones. Oh, but one rock left the house. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to have 16 in play. If it was short game rules, then Team Yellow could put the red back where they wanted. Is that how that works? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which, which end are they throwing from here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on it. I'll tell you what, though. It does make it fun for, for us in the booth with all the angles that you're looking yeah, at. Yeah, it presents a lot of different shots. Analyzing what can be done. You need your Madden Illustrator so you could draw on the screen and tell us what you're, <laughs> what you're pointing at. I don't know if there's enough ink on the screen to cover all the arrows <laughs> you have to use for the rocks in play. So in turn draw, trying to come through that port. Megan McPhee. Whoa. How'd I come in? 
Looks like it may go to that back red stone. I mean, yeah. Looks this like red just sitting one. Getting a little more lonely in there. I think we might guard. I don't see it. Many angles or shots other than multiple rocks being hit to go bounce it out of there. Yeah, I like that. The top 12. Guard. Top 12, Max. We're dead on button, but they, I think they're two and three. So the key good. here for Allie is just don't set something up for, for Megan so. to to spring the shot rock out and sit a couple under cover. I'm falling down my pants. It's okay. Okay. Three. Intern guard being played by Ali Giroux. This does stop for a guard. Be time to look at the angles and see exactly what they could do to get that stone out. Let it sit. Get it they may have just thrown them the one that makes it easiest to get that stone out. I gotta fix That's my That's what pants. I'm seeing. Although it catches the other yellow counter and maybe at best yellow sits one. Yeah, there isn't much. I think it works. They think they can slash that yellow in. I'd, the stones are so close together, it's hard to see that There's literally angle. Yeah, I was looking at the one Claire's looking at, too. I just don't know if it catches enough of the, the rock in the top four. She could get it to a, a third of it. It might make the red double, and she could sit three. Unless you, because you're not throwing a double and rolling over. I think you can do it. I Firm. think it's some some feel. Okay. Talk a lot about angles here. This is uh, sure doesn't look like that rock will get to the to shot rock. It might get to the yellow pocket, but I'm not sure if that helps her get ro the rock off the button. Yeah, I almost think you need to hit the outside of it if you're going to do that too to try to get it to drag Hard that direction. Drag. Maybe it can kick off the inside of the yellow then. Spin over. But you need to hit like half a rock on the outside probably with peel to try to get it to drag that way. So final stone of the ninth for team view, Megan McPhee. Yep, yep, yes. See what kind of action she can get on this raise. Yep. Yeah, drags that the opposite direction. See if Ali even throws this one. Maybe presents more danger than not throwing it. It looks like she's going to throw it away. I don't like any of them. <laughs> I think I leave. Yeah, you could, you, without really any like danger, you could play the out turn tap on that yellow, unless, you, unless the other yellow is out counting your top one, too. If you think you have to oh. get closer than both, then there may not be a shot that is worth playing. Great so comment. I, I don't like any of them. Yeah. <laughs> She's ready to throw it away. So they'll take the point. Throwing this one away. We'll create a 12-7 advantage after nine ends. Okay. And that will be handshakes. We'll count that as one for Giroux, and they take the victory. 12-7. Improve their record to four and zero oh at the top of this field. Mike, they sure gave us a lot to talk about. Look at that scoreboard. A lot of rocks in play, a lot of scoring, a lot of offense. So fun game to call. And Giroux still pacing the field, making a lot of shots. But Im impressed from by Team View too with the way they're able to put ends together and score points. That won't be a problem for them going forward either. Yeah, a lot of shot makers in this field. So. 
Really, really good game. So we are all done for this afternoon draw. We'll be back at 7 p.m. with the men's draw tonight, another feature game. So for Tyler George, Mike Paplinski, and the Curling Stadium crew, thank you for watching. We will see you later tonight.